time for some more lockdown embryology and now we are moving on to the development of the cardiovascular system so we'll take a look at the early development of the heart in this video and then do a bit more heart development and then look at the fetal circulation in a third video so we're starting really early we're backtracking now to around the third week of development so i'm drawing the trilaminar germ disc there's the neural plate there's the primitive streak and of course what we've got around the edges of that is the attachment of the amnion so i've I've just drawn the ectoderm stretching out to the edge there and then the cut edge of the amnion. So this is a germ disc at around 18 or 19 days of development. So before it's curled up to make that body shape. And what we're starting to see here, I'm just indicating, are little islands of cells that are going to make blood vessels. So these cells exist in the visceral layer of lateral plate mesoderm so towards the edges of that germ disc and you can see that more and more of those cells are coming together and they're starting to form this kind of double horseshoe shape around the edges of that germ disc it seems very odd this is the origins of the heart and and major blood vessels but it looks very different obviously to how the heart is going to end up looking. So we've got a, a lot of work to do before we see anything that looks recognisably like a human heart. The first step in that direction is that these so-called blood islands, so these clusters of cells which are going to be something to do with the cardiovascular system, start to arrange themselves to form both tubes and blood cells. So they're forming the vessels and they're forming the blood within those vessels as well. And you can see here that there's a double horseshoe around that head end of the embryo with an endocardial tube on each side and also a dorsal aorta on each side, so a paired tube that's going to be something to do with the heart endocardial gives you that clue and another paired vessel which is going to be the aorta now you've only got one aorta so somehow we're going to have to work that out I've now drawn a cross section through the embryo at about this level that I'm indicating with a pencil and so what we can see in that cross section are slices through the two aorta and slices through those two endocardial tubes and now I'm moving things on a bit so this embryo is starting to fold itself up it's got that gut tube on the inside the two endocardial tubes which started off right on the edges of the trilaminar germ disc are now brought together in the midline pushed very close together in the midline before i label all of this up i'm going to add some color to these pictures just to make it clearer where those various layers are so blue for ectoderm these are the colors i've been using throughout and most of the textbooks use the same colors so blue for ectoderm which ends up all around the outside of the embryo but is also forming that neural tube it's just starting to form just there and then i'm going to use orange for mesoderm so that includes the mesoderm which is forming these blood vessels and those blood cells and then yellow I reserve for the endoderm so that's the layer which was the lower layer of the trilaminar germ disc which ends up being the cylinder right in the middle of the embryo the gut tube here's that orange going in and you can see there quite clearly that those endocardial tubes are in the orange up against the yellow of the endoderm so they're in that splanchnic layer of lateral plate mesoderm in that lower image, you can see the dorsal aorta there at the back, just behind the gut tube, and the two endocardial tubes, which are now surrounded by mesoderm, but also lying within that cavity that is trapped inside the embryo when it's done its folding, the intraembryonic cavity. I used watercolour pencil to indicate those blood islands they're made up of cells which are called hemangioblasts. The heme bit means that some of them go on to make blood cells, some of them go on to make blood vessels. That's what the angio bit means. And those hemangioblasts have themselves arisen out of those 
mesoderm precursor cells. So what I'm doing now is just using water to pick up the colour from the blood islands that I drew originally to show those cells joining up and we can imagine them starting to create a pair of tubes on each side, tubes that are going to be filled with blood cells. So let me pick out those tubes here. There's a cross section through the aorta at the back and the endocardial tubes towards the side, the aorta again, and the endocardial tubes in that lower later image brought together, pushed together. Eventually they're going to fuse. Let's add some labels then. We've got the cut edge of the amnion. That's the neural groove forming just there. That's the right dorsal aorta and that's the right endocardial tube. And this embryo is starting to fold in. So that's 20 days. We're just towards the end of the third week of development. As we get into the fourth week, we can see that the amniotic cavity is being pulled around that embryo. It still exists in an extra embryonic cavity, but we've also got this intra embryonic cavity trapped inside. And at this point, of course, that's going to be the precursor of the pericardial cavity, the cavity that lies around the heart, the pericardial sac. So there are those endocardial tubes, and they are basically the origin of the heart. And that cross section relates to about 21 days of development. So just three weeks after conception, and you've already got the makings of a heart. I'm now going to pick out just those forming blood vessels and look at them in a slightly more three dimensional way so that we can understand how these tubes come together and how that relates to the arrangement of the heart and blood vessels as we move on to later stages of development. So we've got the endocardial tubes and the aorta at the back in that top picture. Then we start to have lateral folding, bringing those endocardial tubes closer together until they are pressed together in the midline, but they're still attached to those two dorsal aorta at the back there. So there we've got veins entering the bottom of this heart and arteries leaving the top of that heart. Got quite a lot of changing sunlight going on here in the shadow. You suddenly see the labels coming back again. So there we go, 22 days and we've got fusion of the endocardial tubes. And then the next thing that happens is that fused endocardial tube, that fused heart tube is going to start doing a little twist to the side, a little S-shaped twist. And we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in another video. So this heart really is developing as a, a very large blood vessel effectively, or two blood vessels which become pressed together. And its walls are going to thicken up and become more and more muscular over time. But to begin with, it is, it is just this tube, this muscular tube that when it starts squeezing is going to move the blood from the bottom to the top, from the caudal end to the cranial end. Time to label up some of these structures then. We've got the aortic roots there at the top, feeding into that pair of dorsal aorti, dorsal because they're lying quite far towards the back of the embryo. And aortic arches linking from the aortic roots to those vessels at the back, those paired dorsal aorti. And you can see that I've also labelled up different parts of the heart tube now because we've got some bulges appearing. We've got two veins entering into a big wide open sinus venosus and then that feeds into a bulging atrium. Then we've got a ventricle on top of that, then something called the bulbous cordis before we get to the aortic roots. And I've added little arrows to show the blood flowing into these veins at the bottom and then passing all the way down those dorsal aorti at the back. We're going to leave that heart there for now at 23 days of development. It really does just look like a slightly bulging tube at the moment, but over the next few weeks, we'll see the development of definitive heart anatomy. And that's what I'll be covering in the next video as well as looking at this conundrum of how to have a heart which is essentially operating with a single circulation in utero, but can switch to having that double circulation, a systemic and a pulmonary circulation at the moment of birth.
it's very clever and it involves the creation of valves inside that developing heart. That's all for the next video though. Thanks for watching this one. Please like, please share, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's lots of anatomy videos there and more coming soon, I promise. And I'll see you next time for more lockdown embryology.